we had you on earlier and your impression of the Leafs was maybe they didn't have enough gusto. Maybe they weren't rough enough. Maybe they weren't built for the playoffs. It's looking a little bit different this time of year with some additions they've made. What's your thoughts overall on this team heading out of the playoffs? Uh, I think, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, I know every day you guys are talking Leafs, obviously with uh, Leafs morning take and just the uh, being up there in Toronto. I, I don't think stateside there's enough people talking about the Leafs right now, to be honest with you. And I don't know. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to put the cart ahead of the, the horse and say that this team's going to win the Stanley Cup, but they've been pretty good. <laughs> like, they've been pretty good, right? And I know every team's going to have their off nights, their off games. But those things that you mentioned there, Rosie, um, I don't see that happening as much now. Mm -hmm. I was hard on them in the past because I actually think with the talent pool that they have, that team should have done something up to this point. We're, whatever, park that, that's in the past. They're starting to figure some things out now, and I like the complementary pieces they have. I think they're harder to play against now. They seem a little more connected when they get into situations. I mean, are they the Broad Street bullies? No, they're never going to be. Uh, no one's going to be. But they're more close to a complete team, in my opinion. Um, I, I just, yeah, I feel, I feel a little different with them. I'm very intrigued at what we're going to see here in the next couple weeks come playoff time with the Leafs. It's like they actually respond when stuff happens now. Like even the There's other a night, now. Tavares, There's a heartbeat, right? Yeah. Like even yeah. John Tavares the other night, I forget who hit who, but a devil's player hit a Leafs guy and JT stepped in there and said like, nah, like yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a mob mentality. I don't think something has to happen every time. I mean, you know, you guys, you both know about this, you know, situation and position very, very well in the game. Like it, you need to address things sometimes. And Rupper, I mean, is it cliche to bring up the whole Ridley Grigg and, and Morgan Rally thing? Like, do you think that could be used as like a turning point, a galvanizing moment for this team? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought so at the time. And I know you guys I watched what you guys said on it. Um, you know, I was kind of bounced around doing some some hits in, in the Toronto area with it, too. It's it's again, just to go off what we just said it showed a heartbeat it showed like enough is enough of all of us knuckleheads had been sitting here calling out the Leafs for these things over the years shut us all up please do it please make me put my foot in my mouth you know what I mean like and, and they that was a moment that they basically it was enough's enough like we're not going to tolerate just you making a mockery of us in these ways and some people might think it was stupid some people might thought it was an overreaction I thought it was perfect and it was perfect because of who it came from as well, right? Your best defenseman, one of your most, um, you know, one of your leaders, one of the most yeah. favorite teammates on that roster. I thought it was perfect. And, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things, I think, to come into play, but that was a pretty emotional uh, pivot that we haven't seen. And I think this team's been better since then. Yeah, it's odd that it uh, you can trace it right back to then to when they started playing good hockey and coming together and finding some chemistry, oddly enough. But speaking of which, they, they've spread their talent out a little bit. I mean, Austin Matthews speaks for himself. Mitch Marner was hurt for a little while. He's back. And you got William Nylander and John Tavares, obviously. They've spread them out from the first yeah. to the third lines right now and are finding success. In your experience, does that work well when you uh, when you don't put all your eggs in one basket? I think so. Uh, I think it. I think it works well, but you always have it in your back pocket to go back to and, and load the deck. Right. And uh, that's something that, that you need to have uh, available too. Cause there's going to become a time where no matter what team it is and what lines it, that are happening, it, it's going to be like, all right, we need, we need a spark. Right. And there's different ways to kind of spark that. So I think they've got the flexibility with that, but I love that. Um, yeah. You spread out, spread out that wealth. You can only go into a game and, and listen, it's the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like, you know, you know who you're targeting as far as game planning. It's Austin Matthews. That's it. So if you can have Austin Matthews, I think it's, I mean, honestly, if you took, I'm not saying that they, they should or would do this, but this is just to prove a point. If you took Austin Matthews and you put him on a line with two fourth liners, guess what? You're still going to game plan for Austin Matthews, which frees up the rest of the talent pool, right? Like, so I think, that's a that's a very extreme example, yeah. but if you were to just just spread the wealth like that, now all of a sudden you can start freeing up different guys. I mean, Willie Nylander, this guy's he's got ninety. What is he? Ninety some points right now. Um, I, I mean, he kind of is. 
a, an afterthought when you're playing the Leafs, when you're doing it like that, if you're spreading it out. So um, that should allow him to have the proper matchups to, to succeed. And, you know, I like it. I like spreading the wealth, but when you need to load the deck, you load the deck up at the right time too. Talk about loading the deck. Uh, Austin Matthews, um, incredible year. I mean, I've run out of superlatives to describe this guy, but where does he rank on your heart trophy ballot right now, Rupper? Yeah, so this is this is mind blowing to me because where what's he sixty six now? Yeah, so he's got yep. sixty six right now. Very well, could get seventy. We've talked that all year. If you were to tell me before the year that a player was going to get seventy goals, I mean that's the Hart Trophy guy, hundred percent, no questions asked. But I think these storylines that have happened, this is probably in my lifetime, at least from maybe not my lifetime, because I don't know as a kid if I was really dissecting all these things. I'll say uh, my playing days and post playing days. So you're talking the last uh, 20 years. I have not seen an Art Ross, or sorry, a Hart Trophy run like this, or Art Ross as well, but the, uh, the Hart Trophy race like this. Uh, it's it's There's so many different ways you can go about it. Uh, and you mentioned at the top, Sidney Crosby, or sorry, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Sidney Crosby, what he is doing, and you're talking about an MVP, that screams it. But in my opinion, he can't be in the top three. Like, he can't be in the – I don't have him in the top five. I think I did a thing the other day, top seven. I think I had I think I had Crosby at, like, I don't know, sixth. Uh, Posternock at around a seventh, but maybe – or right around – they were right around the same. But I, in, in, to answer your question, I've got – Nikita Kucherov at one. I've got Nathan McKinnon at two. I've got Artemi Panarin at three. And I think then I have Austin Matthews at four, which is mind-blowing that <laughs> he would be fourth knowing and seeing what he's doing. I, I you know, I might be dead wrong. People might be the, – the whole point is it can go a million different ways right now. There's so many great storylines for the heart. And I think it's the way you look at it too, like the most valuable to his specific team, the right. the most standout. I think how important are you putting emphasis on goals compared to points? There's a yeah. few ways to look at it, but the bottom line is, like you say, there's so much happening at the top that it's 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 mind blowing how many uh, how many storylines there are. But to move back to goaltending, I mean, you've played. You've played with Henrik Lundqvist, with Mark Andre Fleury, with Martin Brodeur. I think you played with Cujo, like some of the greatest goaltenders in the history of the game, especially modern era. What's it like to have a goaltender like that for the bench, as far as confidence is concerned, and confidence in your in your goaltender and the guy back there? And how good do you think these two Maple Leaf goalies need to play in order to garner that? Yeah, I mean, it was it's almost it's almost not fair to some of the goalies that that I've had because we definitely would cheat. You know, a guy like me who didn't score a bunch, um, I cheated like a, you know, like a son of a bitch for offense. We all did. And we were able to, because I knew that I had to work really hard to get back. I knew I had to do all my things defensively and be responsible. But I also know, know that I could, you know, if if Rosie got the puck, I'm blowing the zone, man. I'm blowing the zone. Because if it gets caught, if, if, if that puck doesn't get out, um, you know, it's, it's a problem, but you also have someone that can bail you out back there. So I, I think it was something that always gave you confidence going into any game, knowing that our goaltending is better than theirs makes you feel better. Even if your team is not as good as the other team. Um, but, you know, from the Leafs standpoint, I, I think that I, I find, and it go, kind of goes off what we were talking about at the top. Like they don't have to change who they are, or they don't need just even over the last few years, it wasn't like, oh, you have to, you have to get a Marty Bordeaux in Toronto. You have to get, uh, uh, you know, a, I keep it on New Jersey, a Scott Stevens type defenseman. You know, you know, you just have to have, you have to cover your bases, and it has to be good. And I think right now, if the Leafs get, and they're certainly capable of getting better than that, if the Leafs get nine hundred save percent type goalie, that's good. That's fine. You know what I mean? And and look at the last couple of years too, the way that Colorado won. You know, Darcy Kemper, I love him, a teammate of mine. He 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 did he did a good job. And he had some moments where he stole goals and maybe even games. But he just had to be good. Why? Because Colorado played with the puck all the time. You know what I mean? Like they controlled so many different elements of the game. Uh, you can go back to to Vegas last year and what Vegas did. I mean, Vegas had goaltending tandem or 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 
rotation to some degree all season long. And when Aiden Hill got in there in the playoffs, he just had to be good. And there's mm -hmm. times he was great. But I think that's where the Leafs are at right now. I think Samsonov has to be good. And when he's good, this team wins. I was looking, what, the last 30 games, what are they like? I think they're they're like, uh, they've only lost nine, right? So they're yeah, like, yeah. you know. You're talking about a team that's 21 and nine, and there's nights there's nights where I, you also look and maybe even expected goals for or against. It's not in the Leafs' favor, and they still win. So you just need timely saves in those games. All right, the Leafs were maybe outplayed in this game, but they still won that game. Like that, yeah. that's something that's not so Toronto Maple Leaf like that we've seen in recent years. Like if they were outplaying and controlling the game, they were winning that game. If they weren't, they weren't. Now we're seeing a little bit of them getting some wins in some games, even in the games that they do win, you know, we letting up, letting up three goals in the game or maybe the odd four. That's okay. When you're scoring four or five, six, you know what I mean? Like this team's capable of that. So uh, I yeah. think they're okay. I really do uh, think their goaltending's um, just fine. It just has to be good. And that's got to take a lot of pressure. I think off those guys. Yeah, we're cautiously optimistic, admittedly, in this market. I mean, we know the numbers, we know the data, one playoff series in 19 years. But it's 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 fascinating to me, like the misconception looking back at that Florida series last year, where it's like people thought that the Panthers crushed the Leafs. If you do recall, the first two games, Toronto was the better team, but Broski was a difference. He was a story. So it gets back to your point about goaltending. You get a couple more saves, you never know where that Leafs team is last year. But how do you think they stack up? I mean, it seems yeah. very likely at this point, as we have this conversation, it'll be the Panthers in the first round here. Yeah, the, you, you you hit that the nail on the head there uh, as far as misconceptions. And this is the thing. I love that story that of the Florida Panthers last year. It's one of those great, I'm a big underdog guy, right? Like, yeah. I love seeing those types of stories happen. Florida Panthers didn't outplay anybody in the entire playoffs. They didn't outplay anybody. They maybe outwilled or out, you know, had the, the they were the Cinderella story. I mean, the, the, I always go back to the quotes with Rod Brindamore. Their team gets swept, okay? And Carolina gets swept. And they controlled every facet of that series. They dominated. I would almost say they dominated a series that they got swept in. I haven't seen uh, that before, right? Like, no. so that kind of just shows, like, the Florida team was just, you know, so just to, to, to poo-poo on the Leafs because of that, no, man, they were doing that to everybody last year. And that's what, to me, is a little different with Florida, even though they're stumbling a little bit now down the stretch. Florida's a different team than they were last year. Like, they actually have the ability to control some games now. Um, you know, yeah, so, I, you know, I just think that uh, the East, uh, in my opinion, they've, it's been wide open all year long. I've thought all year long that the, the, the Panthers were the team to beat because of those reasons and uh, because they're a little old school and I – I am a little, uh, you know, I, I give a little extra bonus points for that because I don't think a lot of teams have an answer to a good hard four check and a punch in the mouth type uh, approach that they have. But they they look pretty human down the stretch here, right? Boston, mm -hmm. Boston looks pretty human this year. I mean, yeah. the New York Rangers, like if you allow the New York, New York Rangers to me are a lot like we've seen of the Leafs of current years. Like, and, and I think the Leafs are different, a little bit different now, but if you allow the New York Rangers to play their game, they'll they'll dust you, man. You'll be done. They'll snap that puck around. They'll look like the globe trotters out there. But if you throw a wrench in it and just be like, hey, if you're going to beat us, you're going to find another way to beat us. I don't know if they have the answer for it, right? And that, that was kind of the Leafs before, which I think they are starting to show they have an answer for now. So to I guess my point in all that, if you start naming off the, the heavyweights of the Eastern Conference, and I don't necessarily put Toronto right in that, but they're pretty human. And that, to me, gives teams like Toronto a really good chance, you know, and it's pretty wide open, I think, in the East right now. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. we got long-form interviews. we got clips. you got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching.